हेलो एवरीवन कप्स और कंट्रोल एंड यूजर प्लेन सेपरेशन फॉर ईपीसी वाज कंप्लीटेड एज पार्ट ऑफ थ्री जी पी पी रिलीज फोर्टीन नाउ दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अपग्रेड दैट एनेबल्स ईपीसी टू मीट इंक्रीजिंग ट्रैफिक डिमांड्स एट लोअर लेटेंसी एंड लोअर कॉस्ट पर बिट इन दिस ब्रीफ वीडियो लेट्स लुक एट वॉट एग्जैक्टली कप्स इज एंड वाई इज इट नीडेड in 2g and 3g networks uh, now let's consider just ps domain for this particular video uh, the sgsn and ggsn handles the control plane uh, that is responsible for signaling as well as the user plane which is responsible for uh, the traffic or the user data now this is not very efficient approach for deployment because you can have networks uh, some networks you know that have a lot of signaling Uh, because there are a lot of smartphones on the network but users are not consuming a lot of data now this could be generally because the prices for data are too high on the other hand you can have networks uh, where there is not a lot of signaling but a lot of data consumption uh, an example of this would be uh, a network where there are a lot of dongles uh, usb dongles or myfi devices where users are consuming a lot of data and let's say uh, the data uh, is cheap now to cater for these two different scenarios what happened in lte or 4g uh, was that the control plane and the user plane was separated to an extent so uh, mme handles the control plane signaling while the the serving gateway and the pdn gateway uh, handles the user plane data now you must have seen this picture in uh, some of my other videos uh, so we are just going to focus uh, on the 4g part Uh, in this particular video now this is slightly more expanded uh, version of the lte architecture we looked in the previous slide uh, so you can see that i am showing a bit of new entities uh, which i didn't show in uh, the simplified architecture so you can see the pcrf the hss the tdf and you can also see the name of interfaces uh, along uh, uh, along with the uh, this new entities so tdf is, is is a new block which most people are not aware of and it stands for a uh, traffic detection function so this was introduced uh, together with the st reference point as a means for traffic management in release 11 Uh, and the sd reference point is used for deep packet inspections uh, or dpi so tdf provides the operators with opportunity to capitalize on analytics for traffic optimization uh, can do uh, traffic shaping charging and content manipulation and uh, it very it it works very closely with the uh, policy and charging rules function uh, from pcrf So before we move on further uh, I wanted to actually show this and recap the control plane and the user plane protocol stack so this picture is from uh, netmanias and um, what uh, what a lot of people actually understand uh, uh, you know when uh, it comes to the control plane and the user plane so they think that the control plane actually only uh, applies to the mme it doesn't apply to uh, serving gateway and pdn gateway but uh, these people are actually thinking in terms of uh, the messaging the signaling that goes on from the ue so you have the rrc messages that terminates at e node b and you have the nas messages that terminate at mme but you still need to have uh, other messages like the s1 uh, s1 uh, messages which is actually used for uh, bearer establishment and uh, and bearer modification so you still have the control plane functionality uh, in the serving gateway and the pdn gateway right and uh, the cups uh, the cups functionality is actually to separate the control and the user plane there so let's let's look at a very quick example so this example uh, actually shows a, a bearer establishment Uh, signaling right so uh, the bearer uh, decision comes from pcrf it goes to the pdn gateway serving gateway and the serving gateway informs the mme about creating of a dedicated bearer 
now the MMA informs uh, the eNodeB, you have so that's like the NAS message, then you have the RRC message, connection reconfiguration, uh, right, and uh, the acknowledgement and the response uh, after that. So, what I'm trying to show here is the PDN gateway and the serving gateway are still doing some control plane functionality. So, coming back uh, to the uh, the architecture which we looked at uh, about for the control and the user plane separation, uh, as as mentioned, uh, it provides architecture enhancements for uh, the separation of serving gateway, uh, PDN gateway, and the TDF functionality as well uh, in the EPC. Now, these cups enable flexible network deployment and operation by using either the distributed or centralized deployment. It allows independent scaling between control plane and user plane functions while not affecting the functionality of existing nodes subject to the split. So, so the existing functionality will remain as it is. So, so this is, uh, this is uh, the EPC after the control and the user plane split. Uh, what I've done is I've shaded uh, the new uh, functionality or the split functionality in, in yellow. So you can see that the, the serving gateway uh, and the PDN gateway and the TDF, they are split. Now, along with the split, uh, as you can see, some new interfaces uh, have been introduced. So between the, the serving gateway user and control plane you have the sxa uh, between in the pdn gateway you have the sxp and between the tdfs you have the sxc uh, interfaces introduced right the rest of the functionality remains the same uh, all the signaling etc would remain the same the user uh, from the ue point of view nothing would get affected This is the way 3GPP uh, has shown the CUPS architecture uh, in, the, in the specifications. I've also provided a reference and that reference would actually provide you links to the 3GPP specification. Uh, I just found this to be slightly overwhelming uh, when the first time you look at it. But now you, because you understand the way I showed the split in the previous slide, uh, of the serving gateway, the PDN gateway and TDF, you will probably be able to understand this much better. It also gives you all the different interfaces which I have not shown uh, in, the, in, the, in my previous slide, in my expanded architecture. So you can of course uh, go through the specifications and you can read uh, uh, this in a lot more detail. So let's look at the high level principles uh, for the CUPS architecture. So the control plate function terminates the control plane protocols, uh, which is like the GTPC diameter. Uh, so you remember the, uh, the picture which I showed from the net maniacs. So it's basically reiterating that, that the control plane uh, function will terminate the control plane protocols. A control plane function can interface multiple user plane functions and a user plane function can be shared by multiple control plane functions. A UE is served by a single serving gateway control plane uh, but uh, multiple serving gateways user planes uh, can be selected for different PDN connections. So this is an interesting point because uh, uh, when a UE it starts uh, setting up different bearers. It still has a single serving gateway control plane, but it can have multiple serving gateway user plane functions. And a user plane data packet may travel multiple user plane functions. So it's uh, it's flexible uh, the way you actually connect the user plane, multiple user planes, because it's saying that the user plane data packet may traverse multiple user plane functions. The control plane function controls the processing of the packets in user plane function by provisioning a set of rules in the SX sessions. A, leg a legacy serving gateway, PDN gateway, and 
TDF can be replaced by a split node without affecting connected legacy nodes. So this is again another important point. So you, you know you can actually split uh, the serving gateway, the PDN gateway and TDF and the other nodes uh, should not be affected at all. So what are the advantages of uh, this CUPS architecture? So I'm actually just quoting these things from the, the 3GPP website. So the first is a re reduction in latency on application service uh, by selecting user plane nodes which are closer to RAN or more appropriate for the intended UE usage type without increasing the number of control plane nodes. So you can have a control plane node which is uh, more centrally located but the user plane nodes are actually distributed. So and again the user plane nodes may be for different traffic types. So you can select different user nodes uh, depending on what kind of service uh, is going on, what's the location of UE but it would still be served by a, a single a control plane function. Supporting increase of data traffic by enabling to add user plane nodes without changing the number of uh, control plane nodes in the network, right? So this is uh, what I discussed earlier on, uh, like the way they did it in uh, when they created 4G. So they separated the MME uh, uh, for control plane and the serving gateway PDN gateway for the user plane and the intention was if you have a, a, a network with a lot of uh, signaling uh, you can actually increase the number of MMEs. Similarly if you have a lot of uh, data traffic you can increase the number of uh, serving gateway PDN gateway right without so you have separated out you apply the same principle here when there is an increase in data traffic. Locating and scaling the control plane and user plane resources of the EPC nodes independently. Yep. Uh, independent evolution, uh, ev ev evolution of the control plane and user plane functions. And enabling of software defined networking to deliver user plane data more efficiently. This is uh, another picture uh, which I came across uh, recently. Uh, from a presentation by Ericsson in the ITU and what it shows is it basically shows the EPC today uh, evolution after CUPS and how it would actually so how this new uh, CUPS architecture maps onto uh, the 5G uh, core network functions. This one is from uh, a white paper which was recently uh, which was recently released by heavy reading in conjunction with Huawei and this is showing how the CUPS evolution uh, to 5G architecture will work with all different interfaces. It's a nice good introduction uh, paper on the 5G core network uh, and I recommend that you actually read it if you have time. And here are some references, uh, the ones which I've already mentioned earlier. So I hope you actually uh, liked this uh, very short introduction to the control and user plane separation or CUPS functionality. Uh, as always, uh, feel free to comment uh, or give any suggestions which you may have. Thank you.